You are watching a master at work. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, whatever time you are watching this. This is Sam Prentice Makes Things Happen. I'm Sam Prentice back once again making it happen. And today, yes, I'm actually making something rather than doing a 3D printer review or whatever the usual shenanigans are. So today we're actually going to be building, boom, this remote controlled R2D2. And I'm going to go right the way through that. But first, I want to thank our sponsors today, PCBWay.com. PCBWay.com are a manufacturer of PCBs. It's kind of in the name, but they have also sent me a box of tricks so let's just get into this first what is this oh my word so i've got a pcbway.com cushion i've got a pcbway.com mouse mat here uh, i've got a pcbway.com uh led flashing star for the christmas tree that is a bit awesome there's loads of stuff in here like literally loads of stuff pcbway.com uh diary there you go this is an upgraded folding desktop mobile phone holder. Thank you. Friends, oh my word, this is insane. A PCBWay.com executive mug. Amazing. Oh, here we go. Well, I've got one of these already. This is a, uh, a 3D printed PCBWay plaque. Finally, ladies and gentlemen. Hey, this is cool. PCBWay.com runner for my desk and if you don't already know i am actually going to be moving studios in january so all this is going this is all coming out of the house i've got a proper dedicated studio space that i'm going to be uh, renting and uh, things are going to be amazing so pcbway.com fabricators of pcbs uh, thank you once again guys for uh, for making all this happen so hold on just for a second i was just getting comfortable and what i thought was a cushion because it definitely looks like a cushion has got a big zip on it and basically when you undo the zip Check that out, PCBWay.com blanket. Oh my days! What a what a what a day! What a time we're living in right now, guys. Amazing. So now I'm all set up with my wares. Thank you very much to our sponsors today, PCBWay.com. Let's get on and talk about little baby R2D2 here. Now R2D2 is essentially the same kind of build if you were to build a big one like I've got in the background here, but in a Pop Funko style. Now Pop Funko number 31 was actually R2D2 and it looks a little bit like this one. I can't get mine off the shelf at the moment because everything will come down in a tower on the inferno, but let's put one up here. So as you can see, the Funko kind of style is very much in the dome here. Now, this is all 3D printed on the fabulous Bamboo X1 Carbon, which means it's a multi-color print. So we've managed to squeeze on the AMS four different types of um, filament here. It's all printed in PLA. And of course, we've got two types of silver, black and blue, and of course, then white as well. Um, obviously, I've changed things over as I've printed them as well. So we'll obviously get that color blend. So let's have a look and go through the build. I'm using the Bamboo X1 Carbon printer with the four color AMS and Bamboo Slicer for today's project. All the necessary links can be found in the description below. And while you're down there, don't forget to subscribe to the channel and help support us. And once you're inside the file system, access to exclusive content on the OneDrive by visiting Patreon and looking for the dedicated supporters section. Inside you'll find a variety of different domes, including Baby R2 and R5D4, along with other fan favorites from the film. The STL files for this project consist of around 16 files, including the head, head gearing, body, legs, front foot, front frame, and battery boxes. The 360 mini servos are also easy to install with the included servo brackets. The Bamboo Slicer is based on a modified version of Prusa Slicer and offers a wide range of features for 3D printing. It may take some time to get familiar with the software, but it's well worth the effort. One of the standout features of Bamboo Slicer is the ability to change colors on the elements of your STL files using the Bamboo Labs AMS automated material system. The printer I have here comes with four selectable colors, but this can be upgraded to an incredible 16 colors stroke materials. With the AMS and Slicer software working together, it's a powerful combination for 3D printing projects like this R2-D2, where you might want to use different colors for the legs, body, and dome. Now, I am currently working on an overview video of the Bamboo Labs printers that highlight all the amazing features that set this printer apart from the competition. Some of the standout features do include RFID on filaments that automatically recognizes the types of materials that you're using. Various build plates to choose from, LiDAR that improves accuracy, first layer scanning to ensure a strong foundation, and remote control live viewing from your laptop or mobile phone. So be sure to subscribe to the channel to stay updated on all the releases of the current overview videos and learn more about all the amazing capabilities of this 3D printer. 
As you can see, the color selection software is easy to use and allows you to choose different colors for different parts of your model. On this particular print, we changed the colors 167 times over the course of the 10 hour print. One of the major benefits of this printer is the ability to slice and send files from anywhere. Whether you're in the office or running errands, it's been a game changer for me, especially when it comes to setting up your prints and getting a jump start on your workday. As soon as you clear the build plate, you can load and send your files whenever you're ready. So following on from the slicing and before we start the print, it is necessary for the printer to perform a series of preparation steps to ensure that the printer is set up correctly. These include leveling the bed, scanning the bed and working on the flow calibration and also input shaping. All these things form part of a detailed analysis in order for you to get the best out of your printer and of course your prints. While that one is printing and as you may have seen in the software, you can set up multiple beds to work on various projects. I love this feature. You can save the overall setup opening multiple build projects with just a few clicks. I decided to color the dome, however I redid this in silver instead of white on the dome in the end. This print is a whole day, but you can change the purge limits along with the infill and the print ended up taking around about 22 hours in the end. So the total of these three prints overall took two and a half days to print. So right now I'm waiting on an Amazon delivery to get the power pack for this guy, but while I was waiting for that I couldn't just make R2D2. I had to come up with something else. So Wexter, I did a C-3PO and I made it slightly bigger. It's not quite as big as R2-D2, but then I'm still waiting for this package. Um, so I printed another C-3PO. So let's hit this time lapse. So let's see what's under the dome. This is where all the magic happens. Now on the dome itself, you have a two part dome, the main dome and then the internal ring. Now there is a gear system, as you can see there, along with a three millimeter screw that you basically screw on the internals. That then goes into a very, very small set of bearings inside of this print. On the gear system, that connects up to a 360 servo. And again, everything will be in the links in the description there. Uh, as part of that, we then link it up into an RC receiver. Now, this will this one will take around about 14 volts, but we're going to run it at 6 volts using AA batteries just for ease. And I've managed to get this RC controller, controller part as well, and the combo was around about £15 or $20. So it's super, super cheap. Again, like I say, the battery pack that I've got will literally plug straight into this receiver. So it's going to be super easy to make changes. If you're using this to maybe give it to a child or give it as a gift the christmas gift or whatever which i've done over the last couple of years making this sort of super simple without putting lipo batteries and all that kind of craziness inside of there aa batteries are very very simple and easy to use of course this is pretty much the same as a full size r2d2 you have two motors inside of the feet and one obviously controlling the um uh, the dome there so it's the same kind of principles and in the feet as you can see here there's two 360 motors and then one obviously to control the dome as well um, there's a little uh, wheel on the front there and that just moves that along the bearing incidentally is off a v-slot wheel so if you have a spare one of those you can basically butcher it and take it out and then glue that into place inside of the front foot so this is how i put it together so in the design and build, the goal was to create a radio controlled model that could be printed and assembled inside a single weekend using simple, inexpensive steps that anyone with a 3D printer and some time can follow. This project is intended to be a stepping stone for those looking to gain technical knowledge and foundations in both 3D printing and electronics by building a well-known robot. All of the links for this project can be found in the description below as before.
So on the component side, I'm using three mini servos. They are FS90R servos, which have a tolerance of up to six volts. You can buy these at AliExpress for just a few pounds or dollars, and they come with the fixing screws and servo arms. In addition to that, you'll need six bearings. They are 608ZZ bearings, you'll need one of those, and 693ZZs, you'll need four of those. M3 screws, and in this case, I've only used nine. I buy them around about 30 millimeters and cut them down as necessary. On the RC part of this, I've used a Hot RC DS90 six channel, which was bought on AliExpress for around about 15 pounds. It's currently on sale for about 19 pounds or $20. The AA battery holder that I'm actually waiting on from Amazon at the moment was seven pounds. It holds four AA batteries and it terminates as a servo plug, which makes it really, really easy to plug into the receiver because it powers the receiver and of course all three servos. Hopefully you'll find this build is not too difficult and the STL files of course do not require any support. If you want to add a challenge you can add lights and sound to the dome using the spare channels on the six channel receiver or by adding a Bluetooth module and using the very popular R2D2 vocalizer app on the app store. And of course, if you do want to use that app, it was created by a buddy of mine called Michael. It's free to download from the App Store, and uh, this was basically put together for the R2 builders. It gives a soundboard, basically, of lots of different sounds, even sounds that sound like R2-D2, but aren't necessarily taken from the film. There's a long story about that, and I'll try and link that uh, into the description as well. But if you had this on a Bluetooth uh, little miniature speaker that you could put inside this droid, it gives you well-rounded emotions the more you push the button the angrier he gets or the happier he gets but i think that's cool let's see it run though shall we ready I have to say, I'm pretty happy with that. That's cool. That is cool. So that is how you build an R2 inside of a weekend using a bamboo. Thank you very much, of course, to Bamboo Labs for supplying me with the X1 Carbon with the four color AMS. Polymaker and all the other guys that always support me with the, with the filament and bits and pieces there. Uh, PCBWay, Michael B, Michael P, Wexter with these awesome C3PO models. Um, and as I say, if someone wants to send me some filament, I'll very happily build a full size um, C3PO that I can whack inside of the um, Bamboo Labs uh, printer as well. Um, thank you to you guys for watching. Hopefully you're uh, already subscribed to the channel. Chuck us a little like, comment, uh, share this if you want to. I want to get this out. I want this to be kind of almost like a, a holiday season kind of thing that maybe uh, it's a coming together of people. And, um, you know, certainly when my son's a little bit older, I'm hoping to do projects like this um, to keep him engaged and uh, technically advanced above everybody else. So, guys, thank you so much for watching this. I hope you've enjoyed the video. It's been fun making it. And we will see you next time. Bye for now. You are watching a master at work.